Okay, they're gonna. You are, and better is one day. They melody. We thank you for your love and your mercy, O Lord. They're all gonna melody.
prophesy things that God has promised unto you. And then begin to declare it with a fruit of your lips. And begin to declare it in the name of Jesus. And as you speak and believe it. Oh, for you shall have whatsoever things you say. The Bible says with praise. sense that he could feel. Glory, Ayana Kassanda. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, God. Thank you, for so thank you for everything. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. It's so thank kind. Thank you, God, for all this being there. Thank you, God, thank for you Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord.
you receive that right now in Jesus' name? We're not going to trade it for anything, Lord. God, even as you, we position us tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody make that commitment right now. God, I'm not trading it for anything. I'm not trading it for anything, Lord. God, help me, Lord, to think the right way, to make the right decisions on that. I started it beforehand. I had asked the Lord for 
deliverance for from something very specific that I have been dealing with on and off in my life for probably I don't even know how many years and I didn't realize that I was I had been praying for strength before but then I just started claiming what I had seen that he had did for others in right. church on this specific for this specific instance and then from 12 to 1, I would not let go of him. I refused. My phone would go off, you know, for the Happy New Year's type thing, but I, and I knew what, what it was, but I refused to let go of God or be interrupted, and he gave that to me, and it's just so special in my heart, and I love Jesus so much because he can, he can do anything and everything if you just ask and refuse to let go. So I thank Jesus for all that he's doing in my life. I just want to thank the Lord. Um, today I went to the doctors and um, I had a CAT scan done um, in this last month. So today I went, the results are good. Excellent. So I just thank God that I'm, for, I'm, I'm in good health right now. Yes. And um, we had a fabulous time at our Connect group. Yes. And um, I met Julia, and um, she was walking you know, with her dog, and I was in my garage, and we talked a little bit, and I said, hey, would you like to come to a Connect group? She did. Yes. And, and so when, when uh, you know, when, uh, when people start coming in, I said, oh, I invited somebody, and she, I just, I just, um, just met her a half hour ago, you know, so it was just a simple invitation, and it was wonderful, and she received the gift of the Holy Ghost, yeah. and so she will be baptized this Sunday, and so I, I texted her to see how she was doing the next day. She said she felt good. And so uh, I invited her to come over, and she invited me. So we're gonna we're gonna have a good time. We're gonna we're really gonna have a good time together.
was here and they, they talked a lot about it, but there was more than 20 young individuals that was filled by the gift of the Holy Ghost yes. that was speaking in tongues. And that is something that we all got to preach no matter how much pushback we receive from the world. Because the world is really trying to push back on that. I had a pushback on it last night. I get pushback on it all the time. I refuse. Being strong on it. Being strong on the tongue. Being strong on the, the gift of the Holy Ghost and what it truly means. And um, I want to also give God the glory and the praise yes. for yes. the healing that took place at HYC. Yes. As Dylan also <laughs> talked about was first day, second night, kids in the wheelchair, can't move, tap in his foot. On the third night, stood up three times. Yes. It was all because of God. Yes. And, Amen. All, and also, it, I believe it wasn't just God just doing it. I believe it was the faith of the young man and everybody that was praying for him yes. was making him and it's our faith together, complete, is right. what gives us the strength yeah. to live for God on a day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Why don't we stand? Would you lift up your hands and would you pray that God would use you Amen. mightily in these last days and God would prepare us also Jesus. for the upcoming fast two weeks from now mm -hmm. yeah. and also for the communion at the end of, of this month, the last Sunday Father, we thank you for all that you are doing Lord, we thank you for your love Jesus. for us Jesus. your mercy God I pray Lord that you will set us in motion now Lord to line up with your will Lord God I pray in the name of Jesus Christ would you just shout to him tonight? Hallelujah. Yes. 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 tonight and we're going to pick up on what God has started and we've been talking about the Lord's harvest. Someone say the Lord's harvest. Lord. It is the Lord's harvest. It's not our harvest. We're thankful we're part of the harvest, but it is the Lord's harvest. And why don't we read this together, Matthew chapter 9, verse 36 to 38. Let's read. But when he saw a multitude he was filled with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Would we do verse 38 right now and just pray, therefore, to the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. It is your harvest, Lord. And God, you're calling us. And Lord, we're responding to the call and bringing others, so oh God, other laborers, Lord, that you are dealing with even right now, God, that we would, oh Lord, together labor in your harvest, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you clap your hands to him one more time tonight? Oh, we need the harvest, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Recent events in the Middle East, I'm sure your birth is just one step closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. I believe there will be more of that to where people's confidence in this present world will be shaken. Sure. And then the manifestations, manifestation of the sons of God 
that your light and mine can shine brightly as we lead people to the truth of the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, obeying how to really be saved. Amen. Amen. Very interesting events as that was uh, all the uncertainty. There was an earthquake yesterday. Where? Over in Iran. There was a 4.9 earthquake and then there was a airplane that uh, upon takeoff uh, malfunctioned, they said, caused fire and, and crash. And so you could see that these events are not really uh, just, just a happenstance or an accident, but God is setting things in motion. That's right. Amen. And it is exciting to see our hope getting closer and closer. While we're waiting, the Lord told us to go. Right. Somebody say go. Go. It is a verb. It is an action. Mark 16, 15, and then he told them, go. Turn to somebody and tell them, you have to go. You have to go. You've got to do something with the gospel that you've been entrusted. You, you can't be a baby all your life. You can't uh, let your problems sink you down. Uh, you can't focus on what uh, you have to do in this life. You have to do something uh, for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. In fact, the sooner you adapt your lifestyle to that, uh, the more victorious you become and the less focused you are on your problem. Somebody really needs to hear that tonight. Would you just uh, receive that in the name of Jesus Christ? And would you shake yourself as God told you to go? It is actually the blueprint of victory in Him. Amen. Go into all the world, every nationality, yes. every nation. Preach the good news. To everyone. Yes. It's Man. not bad news. No. You got a lot of bad news already. Just turn the radio on. Amen. Yeah, there's a lot of bad news already. That, but tell them about the good news. Matthew 28, 18, and 19 is the most popular one. But Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in the heaven and on the earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name. What's the name of the Father? Jesus. In the name of the Son. What's Jesus. the name of the Son? Jesus. And what's the name of the Holy Spirit? Jesus. Amen. Notice, I know many of you have heard this already, but it's good to hear the truth over and over again. Father is not a name. Right. Right? Just a title. Neither is a Son. Neither is the Holy Spirit. And if you think about it, verse 18 sets the context. The Lord just said that all authority has been given to Him. And if you follow the erroneous Trinitarian doctrine, He's not going to say, well, baptize them in somebody else's name. He just claimed He has all authority. He's not going to tell you in the next breath, that baptize them with power with somebody else's name or somebody else's authority. Are you getting that tonight? God has all authority in Jesus Christ and His name in Isaiah 9, 6, the name of the Father is Jesus. Amen. And this is what He said for us to do, to teach. Tell somebody, you have to teach. Be a teacher. You might say, well, I, I, I can't teach. You know, I don't know what to do. Yeah, you can. In fact, your life teaches other people as they observe. Especially when you go through stressful thing, times yeah. in your life. They would observe you and you're just, yeah, you're, you're, maybe your emotions are all frazzled inside, but you have the steadfastness of your faith that, that holds you up. Yeah. Amen. And, and they see you through the years and, and you're still standing and God is still on the throne. Oh, yes. And God has not yeah. given up on you. And you're, you and I are still a work in progress. Amen. Yeah. That teaches people. Yeah. Amen. Oh, it's like teaching them to observe or to think about. When you observe something, you 
are, are it's, it's a blueprint. How, how do I do this? Mm -hmm. right? so, most of us, most people learn by observing. You know, if you have a new job, they, they, they pair you with somebody that yeah. knows the ropes. Yep. Yep. And you observe. That's how you learn. That's not observation that's in your observation deck and you're just looking. That, that's that's the spectator. It says observe how many things? All things. All things that I have commanded you. And in fact, all of the Bible, all of the epistles, everything about scripture to observe it. You know. Get to pick and choose what you want in scripture. Well, this one's too hard. Fasting's too hard. Let's just take that out. Right. Come on, come on, yeah. Oh, oh, the covenant of my eyes. It's just too hard. Let's just omit that. Now observe all things that I have commanded you. And, and when you do that, God is with you always, yeah. Yeah. even to the end of the age. That's and this right. age yeah. is rapidly coming to a close. That's right. Right. Amen. Amen. You know, when you study prophecy, the Bible says that God will put hooks in the mouth of Gog and Magog. And, uh -huh. and if you study that out, that's the descendants from where the Europeans come, and the Russians, and even the Chinese. And they will bring them to the valley called Megiddo. Right. They would, they actually don't want to come. They, they don't want to fight a war, but God, in, in, in fulfillment of his word in prophecy, drags them over there. Can, can you sense it, even in this little uh, issue in the Middle East, there's, there's a resistance of not wanting to go to war. It, it's so different. Remember in Iraq, when, when, when they did something in the World Trade Center, uh, the population in that center was a response to, we have to respond, we have to hit back. Now, it's, it, it, it's, it, it's not a coincidence. It's like, let's not do this. Let's, let's just chill out. And, and if you think that's just happenstance, uh, the Bible doesn't say so. That they'll be dragged to the valley of Megiddo. I don't plan to be around. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I want to be raptured out of here before that time happens. Anybody want to go? Yes. Yes. Praise God to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we wait for that, you have to occupy your time by going. We are called one to go. Right. go. To baptize people in the name. To teach them what we've learned. Right? right. Yes. You take notes, listen to, to, to it online, whatever you need to do. That you can teach this word. And when you live it out by observing it, then God says, I'm going to be with you. Amen. I'll be with you. Yes. Anytime you need God, just, just do this. He'll be with you. Amen. Amen. Yes. God calls us to be farmers, not plant okay. the Word. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. The Word the Bible says is the seed. Uh -huh. And the seed, you have to plant it. The seed doesn't plant itself. It needs a farmer. The, the, the things we buy in the grocery store, they don't just magically appear there. Somebody labors, toils, invests time and resources, and here comes a plant, a tomato. Here comes an apple, an orange, or whatever it is. Uh, th today, I, for the first time, I never I knew this, uh, I tasted a uh, freeze-dried fruit. Mm -hmm. Man, it was so good. I forgot I was fasting. I took a couple of it. And, man, it, was, it, was, it, was, it seems like there was a lot of sugar, though, but it, it, supposedly it's healthy. Mm -hmm. And I'm a snacking kind of person. Have any, any snackers in the house of the Lord? You know, I've given up on saying I'm not going to snack because it doesn't work. So I'm changing my tactic this year. I'm going to snack healthy. And I think I'm going to try to freeze frozen dried or freeze dried fruit. Amen. But we are called to plant so that others may be able to ingest the fruit that you produce out of your life. That comes through your faith. That comes through yeah. your faithfulness and God's faithfulness in your life. As we plant, Paul told this to Timothy, preach the word of God. 
Amen? Yes. Not your opinion. Not what you like or don't like. Well, I think this. No, this is not a thinking <laughs> thing. This is an obeying thing. An observing thing. Preach the word. Well, I'm not a preacher. Yeah, you are. Amen? Preaching means to herald or to proclaim. And we all can proclaim something. Oh, yeah. We proclaim the coming of the Lord. We proclaim yes. the goodness of the Word of God. He said, be prepared. Yes. Whether the time is favorable or not, well, I'm tired. Well, who is Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage. Remember that. As you patiently correct, as you patiently rebuke, don't leave it there. <laughs> encourage them. Isn't that good? You know, encourage them. As you, in fact, when, when, if you have kids, and, or when you have kids, uh, as you correct them and rebuke them and, and, and point them to the right direction, at some point in that day, it, encourage them. Yes. Love them. Yes. Tell them you can do this. Hallelujah. Yes. You can charge hell with a water pistol and will. Yes. Praise God. The power of encouragement. Encourage people with good teaching. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. You. you just kind of filter out the Bible. It doesn't work that way. Amen? If you do that, you are your own God. Right. You have to embrace this, all of it, Amen. as you begin to discover the goodness of the Lord. Yes. Sister Terry uh, testified that Julia received the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost uh, right. because somebody went. <laughs> Somebody invited, and because uh, there was the word, and God confirms His word. Yes. Amen. Yes. yes. Amen. You know, when you read the word, and it communicates to you, usually that's a word for you that God wants you to really embrace and believe. Yes. And, and you dwell on it. Yes. yes. Amen. Most of the time we don't grow as much because we, we read it and then we go to the next one. It's like, you know, like a buffet. You know? Well, I'm, I just finished the, the crab legs. Let, let me go to, uh, you know, the broccoli. Or let me go to the asparagus now. I don't know if he does that in a buffet. They're mostly cold pound chicken or whatever it is. Yeah. But, but, but sometimes when God gives you a word, you, you might have to dwell on it. Yeah, right. And really discover it and ponder it and let it be a part of your, your being. Maybe he's talking to you about, I don't know, fasting or, or, or prayer or something. And you just read every scripture you can find on that topic and let it marinate in your soul. Right. And let it be a, become a part of you. And, and you live it and you observe it. And, and God is with you. And then you're able to teach it out of experience, not merely just up in your head. Amen. So, Julia, get the Holy Amen. Because somebody went. Mark 16, 15, and he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized. Amen? Yeah. And there's a conjunction that links believing to going, observing, doing, which is baptism in this case, which results in salvation. Are you with me tonight? Yes. He that believe. What do you have to believe? Obviously, it involves baptism. Right? Because everything we do, we believe. It starts with believing. Everything. And then when you're baptized, uh, there's only one baptism. It results in salvation. Some people say, well, you don't need to get baptized to be saved. Well, it says right here, you do. So which one's correct? You... Or God's word. I think I'll go with this one. Because it's 
forever settled in heaven. In fact, if you don't, if you, if you don't get it, it says, but he that believeth not, believe not what? It's related to baptism. Hello? Yeah. It says, shall be damned, or it's going to be, that person going to be lost forever, damned in eternity in hell. And these signs shall follow them that what? Believe. Notice the context of the scripture is believing. And believing not just in the head, but it's all about action. You believe, you act. You believe, you act. You believe, you act. Amen. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. That they shall cast out devils. When you're faced with something you don't understand uh, and you feel it doesn't come from God, you begin to bind it, abide uh, the spirit, abide the situation in the name uh, of Jesus Christ. And I lose your power, Lord. Yes, yes. I lose your power upon your people in this place. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's action. Amen. In, in his name, you cast out devils. You shall speak with new tongues. Sister Ada, you spoke in tongues, uh, but as you grow in this, uh, you're going to speak a new tongue in an intense prayer communion with God. As you completely surrender your tongue to God, it'll come out differently, sound differently, but don't worry, it is from heaven, amen? amen. It is from the Lord, it comes by faith. Uh, they shall speak with new tongues. Some people say, well, you know, you don't need to speak in tongues. Have you ever heard that? It's not for everybody. Really? Well, it says right here, if you believe, right? These signs shall follow them that believe. Yeah. They'll speak in your tongues. Yeah. So if you don't speak in tongues, you actually do not believe. Come on. You're actually not going to make it. Yeah. This is for everybody. Yes. Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2, it, it's for everybody. That present generation, the next right, and, right. who are many, as many as are far off, even as many as the Lord of God shall call. See, most people discount this because usually wherever they're going, they don't have faith to believe this because they themselves have not received it. How can you pray for somebody to receive the Holy Ghost uh, with the evidence of speaking in tongues uh, if the, the person praying has not experienced it? It's like, you know what, let me teach you how to drive, but I don't have my driver's license. And I don't have a car. How'd that go, you think? <laughs> and so, speaking in tongues for everybody. Amen. Amen. And if they, and if, someone say here. <laughs> Some people think, well, I'm going to drink a deadly thing. This is a condition if, if it happens, you don't, uh, you know, plan for it. We're going to drink malathion or muriatic acid. No, if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. Dana, when she was young, pray for her, by the way, she's not feeling good. She's recovering. I think I might have told you the story. You know, because I've got her a bubble thing where you put the thing in a bottle and blow it. And she got tired of blowing it. And she goes, you know what? If I just drink this thing, I'll just blow it on my mouth. Bubble. <laughs> the household doing it. So she drank the whole thing. Oh. I'm like, wow. You know, my wife's panicking. And we're looking at the old poison thing. And she's over here. And she's just like, I'm good. <laughs> you know, I'm like, OK, drink a lot of water. I'm calling my sisters and talking. What do we do? Well, you know, observe her and all this, and, and she was good. Didn't have to take her to the emergency room. Of course, you know, don't do this again. If you drink anything after. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. I'm going to believe you. I'm going to believe that's for you, and what you believe. Believers. Believers. Not a preacher, not a pastor, not anybody special. Uh, Amen. Not just a super spiritual one, he said, but if you just simply believe, you will lay hands on the sick and the Bible, the Bible, the word of God will confirm itself. They shall recover in the name of Jesus Christ. Would you worship him right now? Hey. Father, I release oh. Lord, the signs to follow the people here tonight that believe, oh God. Hallelujah.
And God, walking with God is experience based. It's a results based. If it says it, it will happen. If you act on it, you believe it, amen, it will happen. There always are results, amen. When you go, there's people that are going to get baptized. When you go, you're going to see the miraculous flow through you. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't even have to go overseas. Mm -mm. Save your 16-hour flight. It happens right here. Amen. We have countless people, yes. amen, blessed financially, Healed physically. God is good. Yes. God is the Amen. same everywhere. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so, when you go, something happens. In Jesus' name. Somebody went. Amen. Amen. It can happen in them. Right. People receive the Holy Ghost in the parking lot over the front Right. Amen. Yep. Right there. That same time there. People get baptized right there. Coming over here to get baptized. Right. That's where God wants us to dwell. And, 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 and to be in over and over again. Amen. Praise God. Because God confirms. His word. Mark 16, 19. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Now remember, God is a spirit. There's no right or left with God. He's everywhere. Yes. The right hand is the right hand of God. Or Dylan or others. It could be you. Amen? Because he said these signs shall follow them that believe. And, and you just got to step out and, and sometimes observe and practice. Usually, I, I, you know, I try to coach people, and, and this one in particular, because uh, the Lord has been dealing with me uh, of, of multiplying and, and not being the one doing it all the time. I was purposely, I didn't pray for him at all. Not that I don't want to pray for him, not that I don't care, but it, it was time for the people that were there to experience it for themselves. Amen. And God began. Amen. And usually when you pray for people, you know, it's, it's you see yourself as a coach. You know how to pray for people to receive the Holy Ghost because you have the Holy Ghost. You have received it. You have experienced speaking in tongues as the Spirit of right. God yes. gives you the ability to speak for the other ones. Yes. And so when you pray for people, let me let me give you some pointers of what I've learned through the years. Uh, you, you know, it, it's it's you got you got to gauge: do they need to repent or not? If they're already repented, then you could skip that part. If you sense they're ready, 
Like, are, are you, are you, you gotta think this through. You, you can't be just like a robot, you know. Well, this is a cookie like a cutter. It, it's gonna bite everybody. No, they're, they're, they're individuals. They're, they're different. They get different life experiences. And so if you feel a little, a little uh, you know, hindrance, then, then maybe you need to repent. In this particular case, that she, she needed to repent. So there was repentance. There's a lot of condemnation on her. She, she's broken. She's got a lot of stuff that she's going through. You could, you could see it. Uh, at least, you know, you could. You, I, I could see it physically. Some, most of the time, uh, with the expression in her face, uh, that God allows me to see it. Just, and so we repented. And then she said, "Well, I, you know, I, I'm not ready. I don't know. I don't want to do this." And we said, well, you know, then you, you need to be gentle. Because you, you, don't, you want to lead people, not, not push them. Yeah. yeah. By the leading of the Holy Ghost. And so we kind of just, well, you know, it's an opportunity right now. I actually told her it may or may not happen tonight. Mm -hmm. To just make her comfortable. Not that I didn't believe it would not happen. Yeah. And I said, just... Just worship God, you know. Okay. If if tonight is your night and and you pass it up, uh, it, it's 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 going to be a loss. But what are you going to lose if you try it? Let's try it to so encourage people. And, and, and then she began to she began to pray. People gathered around her like you, you saw. Now, when you pray for people to receive the Holy Ghost, don't hold their hand and close your eyes. Right, come come here, Joe. So if Stand up here and face the congregation. If you pray, but I'm going to lift up your hands. So, and, you know, you know, you go, oh, hallelujah. My God, you're a coach. The coach is always observing. So you look at the response. What do they do? Are they praying? Are they bored? Are they yawning? So, so you, and you want to, Lead them deeper and deeper into the presence of God. Huh? So, so don't, or, or so don't do this too. <laughs> or, or they can, they can get the massage somewhere else. They need the Holy Ghost. But you want to be always looking at them, so so you will, so you will know where they're at. And, and at some point, uh, you have to coach them to to worship the Lord, worship God. Okay, at some point, don't pronounce English, but keep speaking. Let it come from your heart. And then at some point, you got to stick your ear in their mouth. Because if they're speaking in tongues, uh, you're, you can't say, you're just, just keep on. Keep, you know, keep on seeking the Holy Ghost. They're already receiving it. Right. You, know, you don't want to tell them, you want to know. Well, I can't hear. Get your hearing in. Get something. Or, 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 I remember one, one, I was invited to one, one church, and, and there was a guitar, the electric guitar player. As we were praying through the Holy Ghost, and he just, you know, just, just lost and, and, and enjoying his music, and man, I couldn't stand it. At some point, I, just, I yelled at him, and shut that thing down, because I can't hear. Right. I couldn't barely hear myself think. And so at some point you wanna you wanna listen what's going on. Sometimes you know maybe it's soft. And then yeah. what, when you hear it, you say, that's it, that's the Holy Ghost. Keep doing it. Keep 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 it. Usually I tell them, enjoy it. Give yourself to it. Enjoy it. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's an amazing experience. The, the word of God always confirms the word with signs following. Would you worship the Lord right now? I just feel uh, a touch of the Holy Ghost in this place. I thank Him. Amen. I bless you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Claim it. They will pray hundreds, thousands for the Holy Ghost. Pray, claim it. He'll baptize people in His name. And be a conduit, an instrument of God to lead people to the obedience of the Acts 238 Gospel of Jesus. Yes. Part of going is our connect groups. I'm so thankful for our connect groups. Amen. Amen. This, this is the Saturday before our Christmas service, and we had, we had many guests, and, 
Well, our very special guest was now part of our church is Sister Aida that got the Holy Ghost and got baptized that following day, which was a Sunday. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And that happens because you took time to plant. To plant the Word of God. Hallelujah. When Julia received the Holy Ghost, uh, you know, they, they, they showed her. I always tell people that they could read in the Word what happened to them. I try to show that this is what happened to you. So they'll know, because people perish for the lack of knowledge. But when they can read it, oh, that, that's what happened to them. They didn't kind of they spoke in tongues. That's what happened to me. It's in the Bible. Then it's not strange to them anymore. Then when they go home and they're on their own, they don't question their experience because they've read it in the Word of God. Amen. Not just some weird person, you know, trying to pray them through the Holy Ghost. It's the Word of God. Yes. So I try to give them scripture. Here's what happened to you. Read it for yourself. It's for you and it's for everybody. And that happened because somebody went and planted the seed. Amen. And it is time to plant more seeds. Amen. Amen. I believe this year we need to focus more and more in planting more seeds. Yes. Hallelujah. That God will begin to give us people that we can plant the seed. I want us, as we conclude tonight, to get one of these. And this is a commitment card. Put your name on it. You pray. And then God will give you people that you can plant the seed of the Word of God in their hearts. How do you believe that? God will give you that. Perhaps people that visit the church here, right here in the lighthouse, perhaps people that you already know and are already working with and you love them, you've been praying for them, and, and God will give you people to plant the word in their heart very deep Jesus. and expecting results. Amen. Amen? Expecting life. Expecting growth. Now, Planting is a process. Amen? When you plant something, you expect it to grow, you just don't leave it alone. Right? How many of you realize that how important your sprinkler system is to keep things growing? And, and so, as you plant, you might have to water it. You might have to fertilize. You might have to till the ground from time to time. You might have to spray some buck spray, amen, to, to protect them. You might have, amen, some bees that would pollinize to make it even more fruitful. So there's a whole process into planting. And I want us to stand tonight and let's pray as we have this in our hand. As we conclude tonight, that God will give us people. He promised that He will do a quick work. You know, when we stand before God in judgment one of these days, He's going to ask us, Did you go? What did you do with the talents, with the people, with the word that I gave you? What did you do with it? And this fulfills it. That when you stand before God one day, Lord, I planted some seeds. I toiled. I labored in your kingdom. And here's the fruit, O oh God. And the Lord will say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few. I'm going to give you charge over many. Enter into the joy of Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost in the house. This is the will of God. This is where God's leading us. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we seek, O oh God, your word, that you might, O oh Lord, confirm it with signs and wonders to follow, not for us, but for those that we're planting seeds into, O oh God, that they may experience your spirit, 
You may change their lives, Lord, and get them ready for heaven, oh God. That we can stand, withstand, oh Lord, all the things uh, that will come against them in this short life, Lord. That they would stand for truth, oh God. That they would choose you above everything else. In the name of Jesus Christ. Would you begin to pray right now? Would you begin to pray for people that God uh, would allow you to cross paths with them? Uh, some of you will have to fast for them. Some of you will have to travail for them. Some of you really need to stand in the gap for them and release your faith and believe that God wants to use you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Go ahead, pray right now in Jesus' name. Pray where you're standing or pray right here in the front. Whatever you want to do, but pray in the Holy Ghost. God, these signs shall follow us who believe, O Lord. And we believe in this place. We believe in your word. We believe in your spirit. We believe in you, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for calling us. God, thank you for choosing us. Lord, Oh, we're going to plant. We're going to plant more seeds. Yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, we're going to plant, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to till the ground. Yes, we're going to believe the Lord. It's going to bear fruit. Yes, Lord Jesus. Our labor in you is not in vain, oh God. Yes, Lord But what we do, Lord, with you and through you is never in vain. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, come on, somebody, go ahead just a little bit longer in prayer for souls. Souls weighed in the balance. Souls that God has allowed you to know. People that you know, people that you have interaction with. God, you may not see right now that they're receptive. My Lord, through the power of prayer and fasting, oh Lord, and constantly planting the word and watering it, oh God, and nurturing it, oh Lord, there will be life that will spring up. He can't do the Namaya Naka Sandalaya. He can't do the Namaya Naka Sandalaya. Yeah, I don't Thank you, Lord, for the first fruits, O God, for children, Lord. And we claim others, O oh God, to receive your spirit, to be baptized this Sunday, O oh Lord. I pray against any hindrances. Would you help me pray right now that Julia, who wants to get baptized this Sunday, that there will be no hindrances, O oh God, I mind hindrances. Somebody believe with me right now as you pray. Come on, somebody believe with me right now as you pray. Collectively together our prayers. It moves things. It moves mountains. Lord, we proclaim that we come against any mind, any hindrance that may come up. Thought process, people of God. Events, O Lord, I find that we find this together as believers in this place. And Lord, we lose your will for her to be baptized in your name. We lose your will of her for her to grow and to receive divine revelation of this truth, O God, that will take her to heaven in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pray for your family in Jesus' name. Thank you.
Pray for your loved ones in Jesus' name. Oh, pray for any situation that God will work it out for good. But that's how powerful he is. All things will work together for the good to them that love the Lord. To them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Your purpose, Lord. Your purpose, not mine. Your will, O oh God, not mine. Your glory, Lord, not mine. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. 